Beneath the surface of Canada's vast landscapes, a high-stakes conflict is brewing, one that touches every corner of the country, economies, ecosystems, and communities alike. At the heart of this struggle lies an infrastructure project that is astronomically over budget. The Trans Mountain Pipeline Expansion Mega Project began as a plan to boost Alberta's oil exports, but it has evolved into a national dilemma, where the promise of billions in economic benefits and job creation collides with the urgent need to address climate change and uphold indigenous sovereignty. As oil is set to flow through new channels, coastal communities fear devastating oil spills, indigenous groups demand recognition of their rights, and environmentalists warn of irreversible damage. What happens next could define Canada's role on the global stage for generations. Join us today as we delve into Canada's battle to build a $25 billion oil pipeline. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The oil and gas sector accounts for around 5% of Canada's GDP. As the fourth largest oil producer globally, 98% of Canada's crude oil is exported to the United States, accounting for 60% of all U.S. imports. However, for the first time, a 733-mile pipeline expansion is opening up Canadian oil to new international buyers. Western Canada is responsible for 95% of the nation's oil output, primarily from Alberta's oil sands, which produce millions of barrels of heavy tar-like crude daily. Historically, most of this oil has been sent just across the U.S. border, mainly to the Midwest. Canada has traditionally been content with the U.S. as its main buyer due to its vast energy demand. Yet, Pipeline proponents argue that over-reliance on a single market has kept Canadian crude prices lower for years. With most future oil demand growth expected from Asia, Canada has long sought access to these markets. But what has been the challenge? Alberta is landlocked, situated hundreds of miles from either coast. The original Trans Mountain Pipeline, constructed in 1953, was the only one delivering oil from Alberta to the West Coast. In 2013, energy company Kinder Morgan submitted a proposal to increase its capacity by adding a second pipeline. This new line was planned to run largely parallel to the existing one, stretching from Edmonton to Burnaby. Initially, the project was projected to cost nearly $4 billion, but it faced prolonged delays due to strong opposition from environmental and indigenous groups, along with rising costs. The federal government has reached an agreement with Kinder Morgan to purchase the existing Trans Mountain Pipeline. In 2018, the Canadian government took over the project, purchasing the pipeline from Kinder Morgan to ensure its completion. The expansion is designed to boost oil exports to new markets in Japan, China, and India by transporting more crude to the expanded Westridge Marine Terminal near Vancouver. The expansion includes almost 120 miles of reactivated pipeline, 19 new storage tanks and three new shipping berths all to triple the pipeline's capacity to ship nearly 900,000 barrels a day. Ultimately, the government will spend $25 billion to complete the project, over six times the original estimate. Taxpayers are expected to subsidize up to $14.9 billion of this cost. As of April 2022, construction of the pipeline had reached the halfway mark. The expansion was to be mechanically complete by the third quarter of 2023 and the commercial service to be operational in the fourth quarter of 2023. According to a January 2023 statement by Trans Mountain Corporation, more than 700 kilometers of pipes were already in place, representing 75% of the entire project. The Canada Energy Regulator granted the final permits for the expansion project in May 2024, clearing the way for the pipeline to start operating. Finally, on May 1, 2024, the long-delayed Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion officially begun operations after 12 years and $25 billion in costs. Both TMX and the existing pipeline are now able to transport crude oil and the company has the ability to load cargo from all three berths. 
Trans Mountain said in a press release that 70% of the expanded pipeline is full by volume. From an economic perspective, the expansion is viewed by many as a lifeline for an industry facing a variety of pressures, including fluctuating oil prices, regulatory challenges, and the long-term shift toward renewable energy. This expansion will ensure Canada receives fair market value for its resources, the Bank of Canada estimates that it will contribute 0.25% to Canada's GDP. The project promises big returns for Canada making up $2.7 billion in lost revenue every year thanks to higher prices on the oil and an additional $34.5 billion in tax revenue. The expansion also promises to alleviate another problem Canada's growing oil sector faced, a strain on the country's export infrastructure as production increased. Now with 600,000 barrels of increased capacity a day on the expanded pipeline, oil producers are shipping their product directly to markets, including China and India. But the expansion has been a setback for the US, which has long enjoyed plentiful access to discounted Canadian oil. Now, the US is receiving less Canadian oil than before. With greater access to the global market, Canada has gained a bit more influence on the international stage. For the first time, Canada has some leverage and the ability to impact energy markets. However, this expansion won't fully free Canada from its reliance on the U.S. due to its geographic limitations. The U.S. will likely remain Canada's top customer. The simplest solution for Canada would be to construct more pipelines to its coast. But the likelihood of another pipeline being built in Canada is slim, given the enormous costs and environmental concerns. Despite the potential economic benefits, the TMX project has faced fierce opposition from environmental groups and indigenous communities. A significant concern is the risk of oil spills, particularly in the ecologically sensitive regions along the British Columbia coastline. The pipeline will terminate at the Westridge Marine Terminal in Burnaby, where the oil will be loaded onto tankers for shipment overseas. Increased tanker traffic raises the likelihood of accidents, which could have devastating consequences for marine life, coastal communities, and indigenous peoples who rely on these waters for their livelihoods. At the same time, First Nations communities along the pipeline route argue that the federal government has not adequately consulted them. A requirement under Canadian law and international agreements such as the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. These communities are concerned about the potential impacts of the pipeline on their lands, waters, and traditional ways of life. Amidst the heavy opposition from environmental and First Nation groups, Trudeau, whose approval rating has slipped, came under fire for his support of the pipeline expansion. As he pushed to fight climate change at the same time, Canada wants to be a climate leader and has implemented a number of policies and made international commitments to reduce by 40 to 45 percent its greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and reach net zero by 2050. Now, the biggest contributor to emissions is of course, the oil and gas sector in this country. The Alberta oil sands, which are a key source of the crude oil transported by the pipeline, are among the most carbon-intensive oil production methods in the world. The greenhouse gas emissions from all the increased oil production and transportation will make it impossible for Canada to meet its climate objectives. Environmentalists argue that expanding the pipeline is inconsistent with Canada's climate goals under the Paris Agreement, which aims to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The project is also a major risk for Canada's geopolitical standing, at least under Justin Trudeau because so much of the country's foreign policy has been geared towards reducing the threat of climate change. The future of the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion remains uncertain. In particular, the long-term viability of the project will depend on global demand for oil, which could be affected by factors such as the pace of the energy transition, the growth of renewable energy, and policies aimed at reducing emissions. Moreover, as the world moves toward decarbonization, the long-term economic benefits of TMX may be called into question. 
Some analysts argue that the project could become a stranded asset if global oil demand declines more quickly than expected, leaving Canadian taxpayers on the hook for a project that no longer generates the anticipated returns. What do you think? Will the TMX project ultimately succeed or falter? Leave a reply in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.